electric potential and potential energy due to point charges. Now let's consider a point charge plus Q here. At a distance RA from this charge, we are at point A. At a distance RB, we are at point B. And going from point A to point B, we are interested in <coughs> the change in potential. And you can see that if we are following this path, this is our uh, incremental uh, path difference vector, ds uh, vector, displacement vector, and r hat is the unit vector pointing in the radially outward direction from this uh, point charge. And they make an angle theta at a certain point on this path. The potential of b with respect to a that is going from point A to point B is the potential difference VB minus VA. So once again, this is potential of B with respect to A. That means we're going from point A to point B. It is VB minus VA. That is minus the integral going from point A to point B, electric field dot product with DS, our path integral. And remember that the electric field due to a point charge Q is KQ over R square in R hat direction. So this is going to be KQ over R square R hat dot DS, our displacement vector. Because they make an angle theta, this will be equal to R hat has a magnitude 1, DS has magnitude DS, DS cosine theta. Okay, so what is ds cosine theta? ds cosine theta is the projection of the displacement vector onto r hat, r hat vector, which is what we call dr. Okay, so potential of b with respect to a is minus the integral from a to b, kq over r square dr. So that's the projection of ds vector onto the r hat vector. So that's a small change in the uh, r vector here, dr. So this integral kq over r squared dr is uh, 1 over r squared dr over r squared is uh, going to be a minus 1 over r. So this will give us minus minus signs cancellation kq over r from point A to point B, RA to RB. So that's KQ 1 over RB minus 1 over RA. So we see that the integral E dot DS is independent of the path taken since the electrical force is conservative. The potential difference is KQ over RB minus KQ over RA. It doesn't matter how I go from point A to point B. So the potential due to a point charge a distance r from the charge is kq over r assuming a zero potential at infinity as we have discussed before. So the potential at b is kq over rb, the potential at a is kq over ra. So you can see that the potential as we go from uh, this charge uh, decreases as 1 over r in three dimensions and bringing a positive charge uh, near this uh, plus Q will be like climbing a mountain. So you can think about climbing a mountain here to reach plus Q. So we bring a positive charge in the vicinity of this point charge plus Q. It's, it will be like climbing a mountain. Okay, so the electric potential at a point P due to several point charges is the sum of the potentials due to individual charges. Remember that potential is a scalar quantity. So for each point charge, we will have a contribution kqi over ri, where qi is the uh, uh, charge of the ith charge. ri will be the, the distance from the ith charge to the point of interest. So we sum over all contributions, we get the total potential. And once again, we're assuming the potential at infinity is zero. It's an algebraic sum of scalars. Now, I have a charge Q1, okay, and this is my origin. It's located at R1, and there's a point P at uh, position R2, and uh, going from Q1 to Q2, I have R12 vector, which, is, which has a magnitude R. So the potential at point P due to this charge Q1 will be kq1 over r which will be in joules per coulombs or volts okay 
bring a charge Q2, positive charge, from infinity to point P. So we go from infinity to point P. This means that we need to add potential energy. Why? Because the potential energy of this charge will be Q2 multiplied with the potential at point P. The potential created at point P due to Q1 was KQ1 over R. We multiply it by Q2. We find that the potential energy is KQ1 Q2 over R12, which is R. And we see that this potential energy is positive. So R12 vector is R2 minus R1 vector. It is uh, it has a magnitude R12, which is absolute value R2 vector minus R1 vector. It's the magnitude, which I called R in this case. Okay. So if the charges have opposite signs, if Q2 is negative, then I would have KQ1 Q2 over R12 being a negative value. The potential energy will be negative. The system energy would decrease by bringing a negative charge from infinity to point P. And why is that? Because the force between Q1 and Q2 in that case would be uh, attractive. Now, how about the potential energy of a, a sum of a system of charges? The potential energy of a system of charges is the energy required to bring the charges from infinity to their positions. So if I have a charge Q1 here, a charge Q2 here, and a charge Q3, this is point A, this is point B, this is Q1. The potential at A, at point A, due to q1 will be equal to kq1 over r1 to kq over r so if i bring uh, a charge q2 to point a in the presence of this potential due to q1 this will have a potential energy change kq1 q2 over r1 to we multiply it with the potential at a potential at point b due to q1 and q2 will be uh, KQ1 over R13 plus KQ2 over R23. And if I bring Q3 to point B, then I would have KQ1 Q3 over R13 plus KQ2 Q3 over R13 as the change in potential energy. So first I bring Q1 to, to this original point. There are no other charges. There is no energy change. If I bring Q2 to point A, the potential energy increases KQ1 Q2 over R12. If I bring Q3 to point B in the presence of Q1 and Q2, then I will have an additional potential energy change KQ1 Q3 over R12 plus KQ2 Q3 over R12. So I see that the total potential energy change will be the sum of these three terms. So I see that the potential energy of the system is KQ1 Q2 over R12 plus KQ2 Q3 over R23 plus KQ1 Q3 over R13. So I add up the contributions from each pair. So I consider these pair, uh, pairs cons constituting the system and add up the contributions from each pair. So that's basically uh, what we do to calculate the total potential energy of this configuration. Okay, so in summary, we talked about electric potential and potential energy due to point charges. We find that the potential due to a point charge is KQ over R. If this is a positive charge and if we bring another positive charge in the vicinity of this positive charge, we will have an effect like climbing a mountain because this is an increase in the potential which will imply an increase in the potential energy uh, KQ1, Q2 over R12. And the potential contribution due to a set of point charges is the sum of uh, the individual contributions, sum over i, kqi over ri, assuming that the potential is, at, is zero at infinity at our reference point. And in the case where we have a, a configuration of point charges, we have to add up the contribution from each pair uh, to get, get the total potential energy of this configuration. And here I went over the thought process. We bring the charges one by one from infinity and look at the change in the uh, potential at these points and the change in the potential energy when a charge is brought to those points. So we can see that the total potential energy is KQ1 Q2 over R12 plus KQ2 Q3 over R23 plus KQ1 Q3 over R13.